<clears throat> what I like to do is show you how uh, we are going to, and I don't even know what are we going to do. Uh, we are going to find the vertex, and we also need to find the intercepts and then graph it. So this is going to be a big problem. All right, you ready for it? Hope so. For this problem, um, we need to get, here's our function. It's in a quadratic form. Um, if you guys remember quadratic form, ax squared plus bx um, plus c. So what we have right here is a very difficult way to find the vertex, um, just with some algebraic methods that we're working on. So now there is a couple way, there is a way to find the vertex um, from the quadratic form, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So if I wanted to find it out from the standard form, which is written up here, I'm going to have to do a couple things. First of all, I just have one unit, I have to have one variable that's squared, and then I have my linear term and then a constant. And the standard form says x minus something squared. So what I need to do is I need to put it, see how I can put it in that form. Well, the one way mathematically we can do that is what we call completing the square. And there's a really important element for that. Um, I'm actually, I've got to write down the quadratic form of an equation. Hopefully that's available, but what help us is if we can do b over 2 squared, that's going to help us actually create a perfect square. And if you don't remember what a perfect square is, x plus 2 is a perfect square because it gives us x squared plus 4x plus 4. So it's really x plus 2 times x plus 2. So how do we complete the square? First thing we need to do is get rid of this negative 1. Anytime you have a negative 1, a 2, a 3, any real number that is in front of our, uh, or any real just number that's in front of our, our x squared, we need to factor it out. So I'm going to factor this out. I don't need to write a negative 1, but I'll factor it out. So I'm left with x squared plus 4x. Now, we could factor a negative 1 outside of the 1, but it's for, it's, there's nothing that's gonna really going to help us by doing that. So I'm going to erase this. Hopefully you guys already have that. So there's really nothing that's going to help us by doing that. So I'm going to close my parentheses, leave a little room, and then I'm going to add a 1. All right? And the reason why is because, remember, I want to try to get a trinomial that I can make into a perfect square. That x squared, you know, plus 4x plus 4, I can factor that into a perfect square of x plus 2 squared. So I only want a trinomial inside of my parentheses. So to get the, what is my remaining term in my trinomial? Well, I'm going to do b over 2 squared. b was my 4. 4 divided by 2 squared ends up being 4. If you guys remember, if you like review back or even rewind, 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 you can see that that was exactly this exact same perfect square I had. So this can be reduced, this can be changed. Rather than writing it as a trinomial, we can write it as a perfect square. All right, but before I get to that, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Right? Wrong, right? 10 plus 1 is not equal 5 times 2. So if you're going to add a 1, you're going to also have to subtract the 1. Now, my equation makes sense. The reason why I show you that is, if I'm going to add a 4, I also have to make sure I subtract a 4. But be very, very careful here. Watch what I just did. I'm saying I added a 4, but I added a 4 inside the parentheses. But what happened, really? When I added that 4, that 4 will always be multiplied by a negative 1. So really, I actually didn't add a 4. I actually subtracted a 4. So one way we can kind of write this is, like, if you add a 4, you automatically say subtract 4, right? Right? Add 4, subtract 4. But let's put this in parentheses because really what's happening is I'm multiplying it by negative 1, so I should do the same thing here. I should make sure that I'm subtracting a negative 4 because, again, I'll say it one more time, I added a 4 inside the parentheses. But when you multiply that negative 1 times 4, I'm actually subtracting a 4. So I'm gonna to want to, so really I'm gonna to want to make sure I'm adding a four on the outside. Well, a double negative is like adding four. Therefore, I have negative x plus two squared, like I wrote before. One plus negative four is, or I'm sorry, one minus negative four is gonna give you five. So awesome. Guess what, guys? I now have my function in um, vertex form. By determining the vertex, your vertex 
is going to be h comma k. Well, remember, in the formula, it's negative h. So my vertex for this problem is going to give me actually a negative 2 comma 5. All right, because remember the formula says x minus h, so the h is actually going to be, this 2 is actually negative for here. And let's go ahead and see if we can determine uh, what our x-intercepts are. Do you guys remember x-intercepts? At both those values, y is equal to 0. So I'm going to erase this. Uh, let me see, what was it? I had uh, at negative x plus 2. Actually, no. I don't need to use that. I'm, gonna use, I'm not going to use the standard form. I'm actually going to. No, I need to use the standard form. No, actually, what am I doing? I'm going to use the right one. We'll do uh, negative x squared. Minus 4x plus 1. So if I want to find the y intercepts, I want to find out when my y or 0 or alpha values are equal to 0. So I look to go and factor this, because obviously the easiest way to do this is a factor. Is there any two um, any two binomials that multiply to give you, or I'm sorry, any two binomials that are going to give you two numbers that multiply by one, multiply to give you one, but add to give you negative four. No, it doesn't work. It's impossible, um, at least with real numbers. So what we're going to have to do is the quadratic formula. For those of you that forget, um, so be plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. All right, make sure you write that, memorize it, you're going to need it. <clears throat> so we'll have 4 plus or minus square root negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 1, which is your c, all over 2 times negative 1. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of math, 4 plus or minus, and I already did some of this, so just to save myself some work, I have 16 plus 4, all divided by a negative 2, equals, um, I guess I should show you guys how to reduce that, should I? 4 plus or minus square root of 20, all over negative 2. Now, reducing your radical, all right, you guys should know how to do this. Hopefully, 4 plus or minus. Um, this can be reduced down to 2, square root of 5, all over a negative 2. Then what we can rewrite this as negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. So your two x-intercepts would be uh, negative 2 plus square root of 5 and negative 2 minus square root of 5. So it'd be like this, negative 2. Um, turn them over here. So you have negative 2 plus square root of 5, comma 0, and negative 2 minus square root of 5, comma 0. Because remember, your y value is going to be your, uh, um, is always going to be 0 at the x intercept. So that is given a, a function, that is how you find the vertex using the standard form, and also finding the x intercepts using the quadratic formula.